What's up space fans, my name is Urban Venture and today I'm going to be giving you a basic tutorial of how to use and program the cow controller in Kerbal Space Program. So the cow controller was added with the Breaking Ground DLC to allow players to program their robotics as well as a bunch of other stuff in the game using the cow controller itself to run very simple sequences. The cow controller can seem quite complicated on the surface so I've broken this tutorial down into three separate parts and given you three example vehicles to work on as a great way of practicing the things you can do with the cow controller and how to actually use them not only in the VAB and the space plane hangar but in flight. So without further ado do let's jump straight in all right so the first thing to understand with the cow controller is really what it does I've probably shown you in the intro a couple of examples of vehicles that I've used the cow controller with but I wanted to go over first step whether or not you actually need a cow controller for your vehicle so obviously this tutorial is going to teach you how to use it regardless but step one is really understanding whether or not you really need it so here's a great example let's load up a vehicle that um, you won't have uh, as one of the example downloads I've just made this one as a very simple way to show something off looking at this vehicle we've obviously got a mini sort of lander but the idea is to show you that for something like the leg deploying sequence so you see how I've made these kind of piston legs we don't actually need a cow controller for this cow controller is only really useful for or um, something that happens over a certain amount of time and giving things like the robotics a particular angle to hold. If you're, for example, like a landing leg deploying from straight upright to like 45 degrees to rest on the surface, you don't actually need a cow controller. So I'm gonna go over really, really quickly how to do this without a cow controller, and then we'll get into the, uh, the actual cow controller programming. So if you already know how to do this, feel free to skip on to the next segment. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna give you a very quick example of what you can do without a cow controller and how you can avoid using one unless you absolutely have to. So here's our vehicle with its four landing legs and we just want them to go from fully upright to fully deployed and that is very very simple. All we need to do is go ahead and set a limit on these robotic parts here. So I'm just cl right clicking the part and then I'm going to set the limit on each leg or any part that you want to move from the upright position to the fully deployed and all we're then going to do is toggle the action to go from fully upright to fully extended and to make that actually work without the cow controller all you have to do is go into action groups let's choose to put this on the gear command so that it acts like normal landing legs and you just hit toggle hinge and toggle piston on the relative part obviously if you're using a different piece of robotics the name might be different but the toggle action here is basically going to tell the part to go from stowed to deployed or from one limit to another so it's like a digital thing it's either here or there cow controller is only going to be used if we're meeting it somewhere in between so if we zoom in here and have a look at our test vehicle I should be able to with a press of the G key see the legs fully retract and then fully deploy so you see no cow controller involved all done with just simple toggling of an action group so that should give you just a little breakdown of things you can do without the cow controller and then the next segment of the video we're going to get into things that you do need the cow controller from all right so we just had a look there quickly at things you can do without a cow controller let's look at a good example of things you can do and the basics of how to program one so i've made for this demonstration a little srb missile that's going to launch some science equipment into space before doing that experiment and then bring it back down under a parachute. So very simple, nothing too complicated. You can get this uh, from the links below on Kerbal X or you can build your own or do anything in terms of a simple launch vehicle. But basically the idea is we're gonna start off with just very, very simple sequence. So first things first, as you can probably guess, we need a cow controller. So I'm gonna open up the doors here. I'm gonna go into robotics and then I'm gonna click on the cow controller. We're gonna stick that on the vehicle. One thing to keep in mind is that you probably wanna add the cow controller on the top of your vehicle or somewhere on the vehicle that's gonna be there at the end of the sequence. So if we're doing a launch, we want this to remain on a part that isn't gonna be dropped into the atmosphere until after it's been to space. So I'm gonna add it in with the probe, which is obviously something else we wanna recover. And there you go, that's the cow controller added. Next step is not necessary, but it's definitely useful to do this, is naming the sequence. So right click on the cow controller, then go to, down to hit open up editor. And in here is the name of the cow controller. So I'm gonna call this one launch uh, if I spell it right, launch cow, and that just lets me know what the cow controller's purpose is. Obviously, if you've got multiple cow controllers, which we'll be getting onto later with the other tutorials, you'll need to name them differently so that you can find them. And if you're wondering where that, what that name corresponds with, it also appears 
on the action group tab so you can now see launch cal at the bottom under controllers and again that's really useful when we do multiple cal controllers at once right when you opened up the cal controller editor you'll be given this tab here and this is where things i think for new players get confusing or if anyone is not familiar if you do have any experience with animation it may become more familiar over time basically what we're creating is a sequence that plays for the length of time that uh, is displayed up here so this one is five seconds if i hit play watch the cal controller here play position and uh, the little green line gets longer as the playhead moves along and then if you grab it up here you can scrub back and forth that really is all the cow controller is doing it's basically just playing a sequence and then you're telling it what actions you want to happen over that sequence now let's talk about what we're going to want the sequence to actually do so we've got everything set up now what i want you to do is go ahead and select the cow controller here under its name on the action group menu and we'll start adding actions so this is a launch sequence we're going to have the booster launch from the pad fly into space decouple its boosters and come back down after doing an experiment. So we need to add all those actions to the sequence. So let's go through that now. Uh, obviously for a launch, we're gonna need to activate engines. So you see me putting those onto the cow controller there. So let's do all the engines. Let's also do the launch clamp released, obviously very important that we let go of the rocket. Let's also do the decouplers so that we can jettison the side boosters, the radial boosters when they're finished. And then I'm just gonna make the cow controller sequence a bit smaller here. We also need to jettison the payload, so decouple. Then we want the mystery goo to do its thing. And then also I'm gonna make these doors open just so that we can really see some of the functions and also the parachute. So just to go over that again, select the cow controller and choose every single part that you want to be applied to the cow controller. Everything you want to control they should appear like this um, if you selected something like an engine that's a liquid fuel it may appear as a green line but for the SRB demonstration I'm going to choose all things that are just digital signals so on or off active or deactive very simple with all of the actions that we want to happen during that launch sequence added onto the cow controller now we need to tell the game how long we want that sequence to run for so at the moment like I was saying if I hit play the sequence is five seconds long well our launch is probably gonna be a lot longer than that so we need to tell the cow controller to run for a longer period of time now every launch or action that you're gonna be doing is different so if you want like an arm to unfold or if you want some sort of deploy to happen over a certain sequence or a landing or something like that you're gonna to need to measure how long that lasts for I when I built this vehicle timed it all out I kind of understand how long things are gonna last so just make sure you have have some idea if you're not sure just give yourself sort of 10 15 seconds maybe depending on what the action is you'll find something appropriate so for this i know that this sequence should take about two minutes but we need a little bit of extra time after the launch is finished to do the science so i'm going to go up in here to the top right where it says length i'm going to change it from five seconds to 200 what that's going to do is now make the cow controller not play for five seconds but obviously 200 now you see it seems a lot slower and if i scrub through when you right click on the cow controller it's now displaying the time and it's taking 200 seconds okay so now we've told the cow controller what parts we want to activate and how long we want the sequence to run the next step is plotting our actions so if you select the first part you want to control which for us is going to be the engines and you move anywhere on the sequence you'll be able to place a pin like so so it's the little plus sign up here next to the circle that's going to add a pin and basically the way this works is wherever that pin is will be when a signal is fired so if you put that pin at somewhere around what's this like 20 seconds 15 we'll play the sequence like so the minute it crosses past that it will play the action so for us for a launch obviously we want the engines to fire and the clamps to release straight away so what we're going to do is I'm going to place a separate one but I'll show you a couple of ways to do this I'm going to get rid of that one scrub the sequence to zero you can see up here at zero and just hit add and then that's gonna put an action to ignite the engine or activate the engine at zero seconds. Super, super simple. That's all really we're gonna be doing for this one, just adding in actions and then seeing them happen at the right time. So that's the main engine firing at zero seconds. Let's do the radio ones as well. You see the side boosters on our missile. And I'm gonna show you another way to add that pin and get it to zero seconds. So if you just put the pin anywhere on the sequence while selecting the engine in question, for this one, it's the shrimp, the side boosters. You can actually, let me move the playhead out of the way. You can actually grab hold of the pin and move it to zero seconds or anywhere else. And it will tell you in the bottom right the time at which you're moving it. So if you wanted to add the pin out here, and then just kind of align it by eye you can do that as well the other way to do it let's um, have a look at the launch clamp which also going to be set to zero you can add the pin and then you can just type in the number so obviously we're putting this at zero seconds you could type in 23 whatever time you want this, the action to happen so there you go zero seconds and all those pins are aligned to happen at the very very beginning of the sequence so now we've taken care of the main engines firing at zero let's look at making the decouplers happen at the right time and this is where we're going to really start using the cow controller for what it's meant to be used for 
So I'm going to select the radial decouplers here and then what we need to do is work out when we want those boosters to couple. Obviously most of the time you would stage your boosters just after the engines finish firing so we can have a look down here in the bottom right and we can see that the burn time of those radial engines is 47 seconds so what we'll do is we'll just add a pin randomly while selecting decoupler and that's that. You can see we've added that at 51.89 seconds and because we want the boosters to be dropped just after they flame out I'm going to put this action at 48 seconds okay so super simple I just moved it to 48 seconds that means at 47 seconds the boosters will be finished they'll wait a second and then the cow controller will send the decoupler the signal to let go so at the moment our sequence is all engines light and launch clamps release at zero and then after 48 seconds the radial decoupler will happen and so that's really what the cow controller is doing is just basically running these actions at certain times and these like i say are the simple forms of actions just on or off active deactive so let's do the next one as well which is when the main booster has finished its burn we can decouple the payload so if we find the decoupler up here and if i have a look at when the center engine is going to finish that tells me it's at 58 seconds after 47 seconds so 58 plus 47 is 105 so again wait a second after that make sure you're selecting the correct part go ahead and add a pin and then for this i'm gonna say at 105 that would be the end of the engine so let's move that to 106 it's going to deploy the payload so again boosters fire at zero 48 seconds the decouplers release the engines when they're finished and then when the core stage the center srb is finished it waits a second and then at 106 seconds it will deploy the payload now let's look at the next part which is going to be when the payload wants to actually do its science so for this what i'm going to go ahead and do i'm actually going to make my doors open on the service bay i think i'm going to wait until about two minutes two minutes ten into flight before i uh, do my experiments just to make sure we've definitely made it to space by that point so first thing i'm going to do again select the part you want which is in this case is the service bay doors i'm going to add the pin wherever i like and then i'm going to type in let's say 140 seconds the doors will open and then let's select the mystery goo again add the pin anywhere you like you can move this one by hand i'll show you quickly i can just kind of guess so it's going to add it just after the other one so again we're playing left to right and each one of these is a signal so you can see the doors are going to open there and then the experiment's going to run and then of course because this is going to go back into the atmosphere let's have the door shut so now for the first time we're going to add a pin in two places on the sequence so here's another one again just randomly placed and you can see when you scrub past what's going to happen is they're going to send the signal to toggle the doors that will open them then it will send the signal to do the mystery goo and then it will send the signal to shut the doors so obviously we don't need to have that happen but i just want to show you that you can toggle things on and off in space and then the final stage once the mission is finished and the science has been taken care of we'll tell the vehicle in question to deploy its parachutes so all we need to do then is put one last pin anywhere we like after all of this is taken care of for the parachutes to be deployed what they'll do in space is basically just arm them ready for them to actually unfold when they hit the atmosphere so that is your basic launch sequence done like i say this is the simple form of programming where you're only telling a signal to be on or off the next tutorial will be on actually doing more complicated stuff but for now let's check that launch sequence one thing to remember by the way just to show you quickly is always when you're done bring the playhead make sure you always return it to zero seconds otherwise what will happen is when you start the sequence it'll already be halfway through or wherever you left the playhead so one one step when you're done with programming is just return your cow controller to zero zero seconds and so with the sequence taken care of i'm now going to show you how to actually set up an action group to control the cow controller yourself so let's go ahead and open up the action group window and then we're going to decide on what button we want to press so for this i'm going to set my cow controller my launch sequence to play on one and then you click on the cow controller and then you hit toggle play or if you just want it to play for this case i'm not going to uh, choose the ability to stop it i just want it to play i'm just going to hit play sequence so when i hit the one key the sequence will start playing everything else will be taken care of and that should be it so let's go and test it the vehicle's loaded in and it's ready for the test let's get the camera in the right position i'm actually going to remove the nav ball as well so you can see clearly what's going on here and like i say one press of the button i'm just going to hit the one key that we assigned to play on the cow controller and that's it so here we go and there it is and once again i'm not even going to touch it just going to let the vehicle do its own thing fly itself hopefully to space and deploy the payloads one thing i'm going to show you quickly just while this one's launching you don't have to do this unless you're interested is that you can actually watch the sequence playing just to keep an eye on things so i just right i just went inside the vehicle there and right clicked on the cow controller 
and there you go look the sequence is playing which is a good sign that we're uh, we're actually running it and we are waiting for our first action of 48 seconds we're waiting to see if the side boosters will deploy we should see flame out and then deploy and there you go the sequence is running looks like the uh, engines hit into each other but luckily we didn't need them anyway after that at 105 seconds we should see the payload deploy there we go payload deploy was successful and there go the doors any second now we should see the mystery goo there it is so the mystery goo's done its thing again i'm not touching anything here the sequence is just running let's take that again we're not in science mode but that would be data ready to take down and then you saw the doors there shut as well and let's just check that those parachutes deploy on their own there you go parachutes have deployed or at least armed and so if i just fast forward us through the rest of flight here you'll see this one come back down so again that's as simple as it gets just telling actions to happen at a particular time that's all the cow controller is really doing at this second i want this action to happen and in this case we chose the simplest actions which were on or off and with the mission complete that leaves us ready to move on to the more complicated stuff using cow controllers and robotics in part two so make sure to come back